my name is Manuel Villalpando and for my class presentation I'll cover the assignment topic pre-1900s printing press. Before I begin into the topic of my informal presentation I want to start by inviting everyone to read Miriam Webster's dictionary definition of what a printing press is. According to the online dictionary they define the print press as a machine that produces printed copies. However, I welcome and encourage everyone to go beyond the simple definition and learn that there are far more details that encompass the making and function of a print press. Today, due to the power of social media, having better access to historical documents, preserving and res respecting ancient archives, we are learning through evidence that there is more information being found on the origin and time when the first mechanized print press machine started appearing. Unlike the popular belief that the first mechanized printing press was the Gutenberg press, there is much evidence suggesting that the introduction of a mechanized print press dates back to as early as the 7th century AD in China. According to encyclopedia.com, during the 7th century AD period, in order to mass produce Buddhist sacred texts, Chinese Buddhist monks introduced a wood block mechanized printing process that would allow them to distribute their sutras faster and to a wider populace. It is important for people to note and keep in mind that block printing is not the same printing or printing method as the Chinese seal printing method. Seal printing predates woodblock printing by several centuries, and it's a, an entire topic on its own. Woodblock printing consisted of creating text, images, and blocks of wood in order to produce a finalized woodblock for a print process, an engraver would apply a piece of paper over a dry and hardened rice, rice paste that would contain it in a mirror image of the text that would be, or the image that would be printed. An engraver had to carefully and methodically cut away on the rice paste in order to produce a relief effect of the image being printed. When it was ready, ink would be applied on the stamp-like woodblock and the image transferred onto paper using a wooden frame contraption to act, act as a form of a frame press. While the image does not show the entire equipment that used to be used for this printing process, there was a top plate and also a pull lever that would apply top pressure to the top plate and ensure that the paper being printed on did get a good amount of ink and an even ink spread process. This Chinese movable woodblock type printing is often confused with the later invention of the Gutenberg press where the typeface of the Gutenberg press was also movable too. The Gutenberg press and the Chinese woodblock type press varied in various ways and we will discuss the Gutenberg press shortly. It is believed that the, because the Buddhist monks did not consume wine, alcohol, or indulge in other liquid spirits, that their inks also consisted of different uh, pigment sources than those used in older Western European civilizations. Where in these Western European civilizations, we often see that grape, grape juice was often used as a form of pigment. This is also perhaps the reason why we don't see the Chinese Buddhist monks incorporating a screw type technology into their form of presses. According to Britannica, by the 1550s, only 50 years after the first screw type me mechanical printing presses were introduced, the amount uh, of printing across Europe exploded. Britannica notes that over 9 million books became available throughout Europe during this time period. This 50-year time period is referenced to as incanabula, a Latin phrase for swaddling of clothes or cradle. And it is also a topic that I encourage each and every one of you to enlighten yourselves with when you have time. I will point out that I also found that around this time period or time frame, we can read that in Europe. We start seeing a standardization process in respects to publishing. This standardization process would commence like precedence for European publishers for years to come. Because of literature found today from these early, early days, we see and read that often the same person running a print shop 
would be the same person introducing their own typeface styles or the persons who would be acknowledged as the founders of a specific typeface style and design that was introduced at the time. We also learned that in many cases, the same person printing would also be their own editor, publisher, and bookseller of their literature too. However, there are many documents found from that early period that mention that, for the most part, the art of paper making and book binding were reserved for outside resources. This time period where we start seeing better technology being developed for the printing press is called the Renaissance time period. The Renaissance time period varies per scholar, but there is a general consensus among the scholarly community that suggests that the Renaissance time period started approximately around the late 14th century AD and lasted approximately until the 7th century AD. Within this time, we witnessed many technologies improving. This is where Johannes Gutenberg, a tinker, an inventor, a blacksmith, and a craftsman will leave his mark in history by introducing the Gutenberg press. Through the ingenuity of Johannes Gutenberg, approximately around the mid-1440s, we learn that he introduces a new form of, mechanized, of a mechanized print press. The Gutenberg press had a new and improved design and allowed the creation of mass-produced paper literature. Gutenberg's, Gutenberg's screw-type printing machine concept would become a standard across Europe for well over a few centuries. What made the Gutenberg Press different for its time? How was the Gutenberg Press different from other previous known printers? As we have discussed in our own prior classes, we many people during the Renaissance period introduced better met metallurgy and better mechanical designs. In respect with the printing press, we now read that the better, these better alloys, better metals, allowed the printing technology to incorporate a new and metallic movable strike plate to print different typefaces and styles and design. And again, for allowing a faster printing process. Because of Gutenberg's creative trade skills, the Gutenberg, Gutenberg Press is recognized as the first movable metal, metal strike print press that incorporated a screw type mechanism. Gutenberg's print press design would pioneer and dominate the industry for centuries on ahead. By the 1700s, a new dawn for the printing press design was beginning to emerge. Event inventors would design a new print press that would replace many components on a print press that were brought forth from the designs and styles of the Renaissance time period. We, no, we now start to read accounts where inventors start to put more emphasis and moving away from the old wood screw uh, styles type. And now with the Industrial Revolution starting, we also read that some inventors start to incorporate the steam-powered engine technology into the new modern print presses as well. The steam-powered engine technology would also allow the new print press designs to incorporate new metal press printing cylinders that would replace the flat press design of the old screw type, uh, screw type style designs in the old presses. This new method of printing, press printing would also allow publishers now to be able to publish paper materials in the millions per day. That type of paper printing was a feat that even the best screw type printing presses of the past were not capable of performing. However, it was not until 1802 that a German printer by the name of Frederick Koning would formally introduce a steam powered metal cylinder printer printing press for commercial use and for him to be recognized as the first inventor of this now new rot rotary style printing press. While this new technology is well worth me talking about it in more details, the development process of a cylinder print press falls beyond the scope of the time period that I am covering. But would encourage, I would encourage each and every one of you to read more on this topic too as well. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll take them now.